Welcome back to Rocket Birds 2, everyone. As we are chasing a submarine, I've got some, uh... I've, I've got a little turbine in me, which is great, because... This was the fi my favorite part of the first game. I liked all of the first game, but this was by far my favorite part of it. Um, of course, then we were up in the air, and not underwater. Oh, but now I get 360 degree aiming, too, which is way different. Okay, so it, the rules are slightly different than in the air. Wait, am I still using... Oh, I don't have a choice. I have to use this gun. Oh, that sucks. I can't hold it to get a big boost. I have to tap it. That's alright. But yeah, this was my favorite part, the dogfighting in the first game. This is a little bit le well, I have tighter turns, but I'm not moving as fast. I hope that means they do put the jetpack in there at some point. And it's not just underwater. But it's fine. This is enjoyable. It's actually a bit more peaceful of a- oh, hi, you're different. I'm gonna make you blow yourself up on your own missile. Like that. Oh, I didn't get an achievement for that? Come on, man. That deserves an achievement. I achieved something. But yeah, this is, they could make... I think the devs could make an entire game out of just the dogfighting in this one. Um, although you would need a little bit more speed than this. Also, the camera's a lot closer this time than it was when you did actual dogfighting in the first game. Which is not a complaint, just an observation. Aha! That is how we do. Oh, got another one. Ah, oh, the missile has a tighter turn radius too. Oh, I shook it anyway. This is really pretty. I like underwater stuff. I think underwater is really pretty. Um, but not that I'm... That said, like, I'm afraid of water. Like, I, I don't know how to swim, and I really don't want to learn. Because <laughs> I'm just afraid to. Hi. Well, this looks like a problem. Um, oh, I can shoot those things, though. Cool. Wow, they're kind of throwing me into the deep end, and that is not an intentional pun. Oh, those things don't hurt. Uh, are those fish? Those are fish. He's firing a fish gun at me. Or he's he's using... Oh my god. Oh, there's enemies everywhere now. Come on, missile. Help me out. Um... Man, no wonder they give you infinite ammo here. This is kind of madness. Um, throwing you into the deep end, they actually were a little bit more uh, of a slow build-up in the first game when you were airborne. Again, not a complaint, not even a compliment, just an observation, because it's what I do. Oh, man, I needed that. Ugh, friggin' piranha gun. Has any other game ever had a piranha gun? Because that is scary and hilarious and awesome and just ah ah love this game like i was always going to buy this game but when the devs offered it to me for free i was like yeah yes yes very much so i would like it because there are a lot of games i turned down just because i only have so much time because i'm on a mailing list with a bunch of devs and so i get offers for free games all the time and most of them don't catch my interest like if you ever want me to not play your game just say roguelike or zombie anywhere in it, and I'll be like, yeah, no, no thanks. But, uh, when they offered Rocket Birds 2 to me, I was like, yes, that. I was gonna play it anyway, so works out for me. Go buy it. Uh-oh. Probably should avoid those. Wow, this is a long sequence. Actually, it makes sense, because in the first game, they had, um... I wonder if enemies can be hit with... Whoa. I wonder if enemies can be hit with those mines. Nope, they pass right through them. Um, 
So, in the first game, there were three airborne sequences, and it makes sense to me that they would only have one water sequence, because I don't think you could make excuses enough to do this again. So, I wonder how hard this would be if I had not played the first game, because it's, it's, like, pretty hard to... Whoa! Okay. There we go. It's pretty hard to keep track of all this at once, but I'm kind of used to it, so... I almost replayed the first game entirely, um, because there are signs in the game, and there seem to be signs in this game, too. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna pause. You can see at the very bottom center where it says Chapter 3, The Submarine, there are those three squares with circles in them. So, in the first game, what those were were little signs that you could find in levels, and there were always three of them. And I never went back and did them, and I don't know if they actually do anything aside from just giving you an achievement. And I usually don't collect things. Uh, those of you who have been around know that about me too. Collectathons drive me nuts. That's why I really don't like Banjo-Kazooie, even though everyone calls me an idiot for not liking that game. I don't like it. I don't like collectathon games. And I don't like collecting things. I never liked it in Grand Theft Auto. I don't like it in Saints Row. I don't like it in any game. But at least with Saints Row, with all the collecting you have to do, all that stuff shows up on the map. You just have to take the time to do it. And I'm okay with that. I am okay with collecting things if I can see exactly where they are. I just, as much as I like exploring, I like exploring on my own. I don't like exploring in games to, uh, to get a, an optional item. That drives me a little batty. So, anyway, the point is, I almost replayed the original Rocket Birds just so I could collect everything because it sounded like something I, I'd be half interested to do. Just, so, just to give me an excuse to play it again. Um, but I didn't. Uh, instead, I just watched my own videos and kind of reminded myself what the story was. Because I'm glad I did because there were actually parts I forgot. Like, I didn't realize the original Rocket Birds even had voice acting. Other than specific cutscenes, but... Um, this one has more voice acting, like every line seems to be voice acted, which was not the way it was in the first one. I am getting a little sloppy here. Need that health pack. Whoa! Oh! Oh, I was so close! Uh, hopefully I didn't go too far back. Mines? Okay, cool. All right. That's fine. I saw that health pack, and then when the one penguin came after me, or pigeon, whatever it is, I thought it was my health pack. Oh, maybe I've been moving around too much. Yeah, this is a lot easier. I just have to move when he starts launching missiles at me. Like that. Oh, jeez. I don't even know how I dodged that. Wow, that's a lot easier than trying to fly around at maximum speed. Or I guess swim around, in this case. It's kind of a very satisfying... <laughs> so hollow, since it's underwater. I have much tighter control underwater than I thought I did. It's because I was moving around too much. I know the game's generous with pickups, like, if I run low on health, it greatly seems to increase the chance the next enemy is gonna drop some health for me. I wonder if there's a... Is there another guy shoot? Oh, there he is. Yep, yep, I knew there was gonna be another guy somewhere who was firing fish. Ow. That missile just circle around me without actually hitting me? That one didn't. Ugh. Oh, that's not a full health pickup. I need to be a little bit more, uh... Now I need to start moving, because there's too many things around me here. Alright. A little bit of boost. So, yeah. When I was air dog fighting, I would constantly be holding the boost button, and 
being underwater, it seems like that's actually not in my favor. I should be not boosting unless I have to. There's a pyro pro tip in case you guys play this on your own. But, oh, earlier I said I like the water. Like, I like underwater... Oh, must have done it. <clears throat> I like underwater um, situations, especially in games. Like, I'm a big fan of Subnautica. Um, almost played Subnautica for the channel, and then decided not to. I wanted to just kind of sit back and enjoy it. There was a health pickup, and it cheated me out of it. All right, let's... Oh. There we go. Hail Putzke. Whoa, sudden big frame rate drop. What the heck? wonder if it's because there's that... Oh, well, now it corrected itself. Oh, maybe it was loading. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that was gross. Suck it! Oh, wait, wait. I'm still using that gun. Now I can switch back to my AK, which has... Much better damage. Oh, wait. Yeah, twice as much damage, but much worse stability, but double headshots, yeah. So I'm just trading damage for stability. I'm okay with that. Cool. Okay, finally, what the, I didn't even see that guy. Suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it. <clears throat> Alright, yeah, let's... Oh, shotguns are so slow to reload. And now I have that key card. Cool beans. Uh, sorry immediately for saying that. <gasps> there's one of the signs! Speaking of signs, another sign has appeared somewhere in the chapter. Oh, there's two? But it says there's three down there. Hmm, weird. I don't know. So... I, when it comes to collectathons and games, usually, like for this, I will get them if they're in my way like that. Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to avoid them. But at the same time, um. Shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, computer. Don't do that to me. No, 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 no. No, computer. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you minimize the window while I was trying to play? What is wrong with you? Ugh. My computer has been doing this thing where it wants to, uh, minimize full screen games. And I've been trying to figure out what exactly is causing that. Because a lot of people seem to have that problem, too. It's essentially what's going on is there's a program that keeps wanting to override the games, but I can't figure out what that program is. I assume it's something with Apple, because iTunes keeps wanting to update itself, and I know I never start it, and even though I kill it constantly on my startup config, it, for whatever reason, wants to keep on going. It drives me insane. I'm going to have to deal with that nonsense between episodes. Okay. I can't really reach that guy. Oh, hi. Yeah, I can't reach him, but I can do this. There we go. Ow, ow, dick. That is an automatic shotgun that guy has. Got him. Hmm. So that's a monster closet, which probably means I need to, uh... Hmm. I need him for some reason. Can't pick that up. Oh, but I can go this way. All right, cool. Oh shit! That's why I needed them. Okay, back to the shoddy. Jeez, man, that guy hits so hard. Or 
Maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's just my imagination that he's hitting that hard. It's possible that it, the the sound of the gun is just so intense that I'm I think that he's hitting me harder than he is. All right, I think that's the end of this area, and that will do it for me for today. I am really enjoying this. So we're going to continue exploring this nuclear sub in the next episode and try to put a stop to El Putski's reign. Although, I guess we're not stopping the sub. We're just riding it all the way to Junglia. So we're going to see what's in Junglia and hopefully put a stop to El Putski's uh, evil plan. So thank you all very much for watching. Let me have your triple firing shotgun, Dick. What? Shoot him on sight, and Gilbert, bring me my cluster gun. Oh boy. <laughs> so we're gonna deal with this nonsense and a cluster gun in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for another one.